Alright, I got mine right where I want it to be. Mike, you know I left in February, early February 2004. Yep. Uh, just a couple of days after music Trying chairs. Trying to me. In the hole. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I tried to, I would have. Okay? <laughs> let's just set the, let's get set the record straight. <laughs> right here and now. Okay. I love the stories that these guys write about how everybody's like having to drag you off and you know, you would have killed me and tried to murder me and this and that. It's like, that's, that's, that's one of those things that I go, you know, these guys have completely lost touch with any sense of reality or, you know, what actually happened. Yeah, I know, I know. It's universal creation of delusional minds. It's covered in the FPRD series. But, um, and it's covered in, in all the material on implants. The scavenger's got everybody implanted in some universe. But, but I left when it became literally, the guy was like the Dino De Laurentiis of, of it, it was like he was making implantation movies. I mean, you know, the musical chairs, we had people have to get up in front of everybody, like, a, a, you know, the Chinese, North Korean confession technology in front of everybody. Yeah. And, you know, after four days of it, I got the hell out of there. And, you know, as you know, I didn't touch base with you till 08, I guess you were up for a year or so. And I, I sincerely asked, hey, you know, did everything straighten out once I left? And of right. course, your answer was... <laughs> Not slightly. Right. And then I asked you... It got you, worse. And I asked you to... Um, Elaborate, and what did you tell me? Tell well, me everything I, I said to you and everything you said to me. Yes, sir. It things just degenerated. You know, when you got a hundred people stuck, locked in a building with bars on the doors and guards at the doors and not able to get out, and all that they are supposed to do, they have nothing else but to find the out ethics. Find the out ethics of everybody that's in there. Right. It it's like the Lord of the Flies. Sure. And of course, out ethics is defined as any thought that might run contra to Miscavige's thoughts. Right. Exactly. And you know, it's, thought, it's literally thought crimes. Exactly. Yeah. And what you know, everybody's frantically trying to figure out what their what their own scene out ethics uh, op is uh, yeah. in order to be the one that manages to get out. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes. Like, like everybody's convinced that if they are the one that shows that they're more on Miscavige's team than anybody else, that's they'll the, somehow get out. out. Right. Okay, that's like that's the, the only way out. There's mm -hmm. only there's one way out. Exactly. Right. That's the music of jazz. So what happens is it just it just devolves into sadism. And by that I mean it got so bad that you know, you, you put some of that stuff that happened to Janet, you know, being put in a, in a trash can with a sign around her neck, I'm a lesbian. Because, Debbie. Debbie, I mean. Yeah. Because she, well, that actually happened to Janet, too. No kidding. Not the lesbian, but put in a trash can, I'm a criminal with a sign, I'm a criminal. Janet Light, president of ISA. Yeah, standing in a trash can. Yeah. A big garbage can. Um, but it, it also got to physical torture of people. And I mean, like, literally torture. Oftentimes, there was indoor-outdoor carpet in that building, and people were made to crawl around on their hands and knees around the, the uh, RTC conference room table until their hands and knees were actually bleeding, and, and you get a combination of a graze and a burn. Yeah. And the, the things don't heal. They start pussing and festering. And, like, a bunch of people had that, myself included. Yeah, you showed me the scars. Right. But then the, the worst ones were when Russ Bellin, the president of IASA. CST. Uh, CST, sorry, showed up in the hole. One and he day. was the golden boy. He was. He had been the golden right. boy. You know, he was one in many of the sequence of golden, golden right. children. Right. And he showed up. And to begin with, the only people that were allowed to talk to him were me. Angie and Kurt, because the only people that knew about CST and the right. locations, etc., were me, Angie, and Kurt. Angie so, Blankenship, right, and Kurt Wheeling. And Kurt Wheeling. Yeah. In any event, after a while, he sort of came through, and then he decided he was going to get himself out, and he became, you know, King Tough Guy, because then a bunch of other uh, CST stuff got sent down there. The DCO, uh, like, and in fact, there was like 20 of them there at one point. Mike, listen, 
for, just for terms of some perspective, yeah. I always knew Russ is a pretty decent guy. You know, when I left, in fact, they made a big dramatization and exaggerated. But the fact of the matter is, he did a Rodney King when I was incited by Miscavige to punch on you. Right. He came in and said, hey, can't we all just get along? Right. You know, and, and that was in February 2004. So we're fast forwarding a year or two, huh? Yeah, we're fast and forwarding this, into the middle of 2006. Right. Okay. And now, of course, Russ is no longer the golden child. Mm -hmm. He's now, in fact, interestingly, the last remaining potential threat to Miscavige. How if so? you think about it, okay, Pat and Annie were gone. They were the biggest right. threats to begin with. Right. VA was gotten rid of. Mayo was gotten rid of. Right. Janet then, the IASA, which was it, which was really set up to be an autonomous activity. Oh, for its statutes, it is. So yeah. Janet having a big organization that had a lot of money was a threat to Miscavige. Right, right. She had to be taken out. The last remaining one was Russ and CST, because right. CST, by its statutes, has the right to take away RTC's rights to enforce the trademarks and copyright and, it, and you know, upper-level materials, etc. Yeah. So, of course, Russ and his entire crew, virtually, I think there were four or five people left up at Mile High. Which and, is up in Narrowhead. At Arrowhead. Lake Arrowhead. And then two out in New Mexico and two up in Trementina. And there was hardly anybody left. So, but after a while, Russ decided he was going to show everybody how things got done. So he could get the hell so out. So he could get the hell out. Right. So he actually had Kurt Weiland sitting in a chair with two people standing over him in the center conference room in that building. And the AC in there was all above that building, and that I room that. used to get frigid cold, and the rest of the place would stay hot. Because the doors were open, Because there was no real right. ducting, it was all by... Anyway, yeah. he had Kurt sitting in this chair, and he started pouring water over his head. Like, just a bit, not like drenching him, but just a bit. And a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more. This went on for like a half an hour, and eventually he was soaked from head to toe. But he was also cold, and in fact, he turned blue. Marty, I'm not kidding. He was blue. His lips were white. He was shaking and uncontrollably unable to talk wow. in the end. Wow. Because he'd, he'd sat there for 30 minutes under a freezing cold air conditioning vent with cold water being poured on him. Right. And it eventually lowered his body temperature, and he was hypothermiating or wh whatever the correct right, word is right. for it until eventually it had to be stopped because it was getting nowhere. Also Russ was there with a fly swatter with one of his own stuff, hit him across the face with a fly swatter. Was the guy t restrained? He was restrained by reason of two people standing alongside okay. him so that if he tried to move, you get the, he knew that they would out of him. Yeah. yeah. But this is a fly swatter, and if you do that to someone persistently for 15 minutes, you end up with big red welts on your face. Right. That's exactly what happened. Tom Horn. I, I, I'm not sure if it was Tom or whether it was one of the other Willis CST guys. Bruce, uh, yeah, yeah. Bruce Bolstead? Yeah, or that, or that little guy that, you, that did the Mark 8 research. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember. Okay, okay. But in any event, it, it just, it turned into like animal, like a, like Lord of the Flies, just yeah. like that. Lord of the Flies is the best example. I read that book recently and I went, huh, this is, it captured so well what happens when you have the, the, the enforced isolation and then people thinking the way they're going to survive is they're going to tread on everybody else in order to become bigger and better than they are. Wow. You're all in the name of Scientology. Yeah, sort of. Well, I mean, instigated by the chairman of yeah. the whole thing, right? Exactly. Doing it to the guy who's the only person who has the legal authority to do anything about it. Correct. 